Cell Family and Ablo Simple Suburban Living. And today I just want to talk a little bit about uh, some of the system maintenance and, and upkeep. Uh, one of the things that I, you know, kind of wondered about or uh, worried about a little bit, I guess you could say, when I was thinking about doing aquaponics indoors here is, you know, how much time am I going to have to invest into this? Uh, what are going to be some of the things I'm going to have to do as far as upkeep goes? Um, I didn't want to be tied to the system where, you know, I had to come down here every day and, and adjust and change things and add water and you turn the lights on and off and uh, all those kinds of things. Um, and so I just thought I would kind of go through our system here and talk a little bit about that, what I do on a daily basis, some of the things I need to do for upkeep, um, and also talk about some of the ways that I designed the system to make it uh, as, as hands-free as possible. Uh, that way we can spend more time, you know, tending the plants and, and growing things and, uh, you know, messing around with the fish and, and uh, breeding and all the kind of fun stuff with aquaponics and less you know, upkeep and maintenance on the system. So um, I'll start with kind of the lighting and talk a little bit about that and uh, how I've kind of set that up to be hands free. Okay, so in the system that I have set up here, we have four grow lights. Uh, for those of you who have been following along, you, you probably know that already, but uh, I have four grow lights in the system. The reason I set up four individual grow lights instead of one long system um, is so that I can individually raise and lower the lights and also experiment with different kinds of lighting in each grow bed for different types of crops. Um, one of the things that's going to make life a lot easier is having some type of a timer set up on your lights. Now you can do individual timers on each light if you want to experiment with different lighting times for different types of plants. Uh, but I have all of mine tied into one central uh, power strip and then I have uh, just a cheap lamp timer that we have laying around here. And I just have this set on a schedule for I think it's 14 hours right now. Um, I will adjust the time that the lights run based on what season it is outside. So in the winter time, I'll tone it down to maybe 10 hours or 12 hours. In the summertime, I'll maybe turn it up to 14 or 16 hours. Um, and so just kind of try to mimic the, the uh, seasons the natural sunlight goes in. So, um, but having a timer is going to be very, very important. When I first set the system up, I was down here in the morning turning the lights on. In the afternoon, turning the lights off, or in the evening, turning the lights off. I can't tell you how many times I forgot to turn them off and they ran all night or I forgot to turn them on. I mean, you know, so having a timer is just a must. You gotta have that set up uh, right off the bat. Okay, so one of the things that I really didn't wanna have to do with the system is constantly try to add water to it and you know, keep topping it off all the time. Obviously there's evaporation going on here um, and the plants are up taking water and things like that. So you do have to add water to the system constantly. And I didn't really want to have to mess with that. I didn't want to have to forget or, you know, worry about, you know, the system water levels getting too low. So when I designed the system, I put in this little auto top off. And basically all this is is just a small little float valve. Um, I'll put a link in the description to the one that I'm using. Uh, I bought it on Amazon. I think it was, I don't know, maybe $12. I don't remember the price, but uh, it wasn't expensive. And it's just a little quarter inch water line that you'd use for like your uh, ice maker or something like that in your refrigerator or freezer. Um, and I have this run over to a filter. I did another video on that. I'll put a link to that up, up above there. So this, all it does is whenever the water level, and this is my sump tank right here, whenever the water level gets down to a, you know, a low point in the bottom of this barrel, um, the system, the float valve just lets a little bit of water into the system. So as the grow beds are filling and draining and that kind of stuff, normally the water level stays up here. And as it gets a little bit lower, it'll start to cycle down below that float valve every once in a while and it'll just add a little bit of water. So it always keeps the system topped off. I never have to add any water to it. I never have to worry about it running out of water. I can siphon water off from my swirl filter and, and take water out to our gardens and use this fertilizer, basically the water in here, um, as fertilizer for our other plants. And I never have to worry about putting any water back into the system. It's all automatic. Um, that has been one of the best things that I've had in the system, I think, uh, and one of the nicest things to uh, just not have to worry about. Okay, so you're looking at the top of uh, the two of my fish tanks here, um, and really the only thing I wanted to mention here was just feeding the fish. Um, one of the things I am looking at doing down the road is, is setting up a little automatic fish feeder to, to mount on the side of each one of these barrels that I can maybe hook like a two liter full of food in or something like that, where, uh, you know, if we go on vacation or something, uh, we can actually have something that will feed the fish for a few days. Um, right now, you know, if we went on like a week-long vacation or something, I would have to have somebody come down and, you know, uh, feed the fish at least a couple times a week. So, um, so that's one of the things that I will be adding in the future. And uh, if I do that anytime soon, I'll put a link in uh, the top of the video here for that uh, addition. Okay, so this is kind of a top view of the swirl filter. And uh, again, I, I'll put a link to the video where we kind of built this. 
Um, but this has to be cleaned out every once in a while. I would say every, you know, I don't know, maybe a week or two, you get a lot of fish waste and extra fish food that the fish aren't eating quick enough as it gets kind of sucked through the system. And so this does have to be kind of cleaned out. And so what I've kind of designed here is just this little, it's almost like a, works kind of like a pool vacuum. Um, just works off of a siphon. Uh, this is a hose is kind of run through one of the bulkheads uh, on the bottom of this barrel and just stick it in there. And I've got a valve that we turn on and that will allow this to suck up all of the waste off the bottom here. And I can, that pours right into either a drain or it goes into a watering can or a five gallon bucket or whatever you want to put in there to uh, take it out to your gardens. This is the best fertilizer you can possibly get. It's absolutely packed full of nitrogen and uh, this fish waste and fish food as this stuff breaks down it's just packed full of nutrients so this is the, the absolute best stuff to save so this goes right out to our gardens normally. So kind of uh, lastly here, one of the things that uh, I, I was very curious about was kind of water quality and how, you know, how much am I going to have to really add nutrients and adjust things and change things and, and uh, learn a lot about pH and ammonias and nitrates and nitrates and all that good stuff. Um, you know, this is the test kit that I would obviously recommend, this API Freshwater Master Test Kit. It comes with basically all the tests that you need. And to be honest with you, I almost never do any types of water testing unless I have some type of a problem or I'm noticing something's not right. Um, if you've follow, been following along here, you'll know that I've struggled with pH. And so that's one of the things that I have, you know, I do test for and I've experimented with different things to kind of change and bring that pH down to where I want it to be. Um, and so really that's the only water test that I do on a regular basis. Uh, it is a good idea maybe every couple months just to test your ammonia and nitrates level. If you change anything in the system, you want to do a test just to make sure your water, water quality is okay for the fish. Uh, but that's really the only time you need to do any type of water test. When you're initially setting up the system, you're going to do a lot of water testing over the first maybe month or two. And once everything gets established and everything's working well, you really won't need to test it again. So um, that's one of the things that I you know, kind of wondered about uh, when I first started. but. Uh, really isn't something that uh, you need to come down and do every day. All right, so those were some of the main concerns that I had when I was kind of designing and setting up the system. Um, having that solid, the uh, solid lifting overflows in the fish tanks means that I'll never have to clean those fish tanks out. Having that automatic watering, water top off system, I never have to worry about water levels in the system. I never have to add any water. Having the swirl filter with that little kind of vacuum system makes it so easy to clean that thing out. Uh, it only takes me a couple minutes and I can use that, you know, fish waste and that uh, aquaponics water to fertilize the gardens, um, add to compost piles, whatever you want to do. That stuff is like fertilizer gold. It's, it's perfect for um, the fertilizer. So, um, the, only, the only thing I really absolutely have to do down here is feed the fish. Um, and as I said, I'll, I'll look into getting a, putting together some type of an automatic fish feeder to, to work on that issue. Um, having the lights on a timer, obviously, you know, that's a, that's a no-brainer. That just has to be done. Um, you don't want to have to be down here trying to remember to turn the lights on and off. It, it just, you're going to forget and it's not going to work out for you. So, um, the grow beds themselves, I do have compost worms in the grow beds. And so hopefully I won't have to clean those out too often. Uh, root material and any, any organic waste that gets in there, I'm hoping those compost worms will eat up for me. Um, and keep those grow beds kind of flowing cleanly. Uh, but maybe every two years or so, I'll, I may have to take the rock out and kind of clean things up a little bit. Um, that'll probably be the biggest maintenance piece on the system. So um, everything else is completely hands free. So um, I'm not a super expert with aquaponics. Uh, I've done this for for a few years now, and uh, I've done a lot of research. And so hopefully, I can answer any questions that you guys might have. Uh, please put those in the comment section down below. Anything that you have in your system that makes it easy to maintain, I'd love to hear about those because anything I can add uh, to my system, I would love to, to hear about that stuff. So questions and comments are always welcome. Please hit that thumbs up on the video. It always makes a huge difference for me. Uh, it makes a big difference for the video and it helps me to kind of understand what content uh, you guys like to see. Um, as always, you guys can follow us over on Facebook, Pinterest, Twitter, Instagram. I'll link to all that in the description. You can ask your questions over there as well and kind of keep up with what we have going on over here. Subscribe to any of our channels. If you stick around to the end slide uh, that will come after the video here, there's a link to subscribe to my channel, the SSL Family Mom, or the SSL Family Kids. And so you can kind of keep up to date on the YouTube videos we have that we put out on a regular basis as well. So, um, as always, thanks for watching. Thank you.